I want you to take a step back and imagine a scenario for me. Xander, JD and Danny have just committed a crime, but all have been caught by Jeff, the police officer. In their individual cells on Shipwheel Island, they must make a choice. They can either do not do anything or rat out their accomplices. If they all remain silent, then no one gains an advantage. If up to two people choose the blame option, they get an advantage, and the ones who remain silent gain nothing. If all three of them choose to rat each other out, then all three of them are disadvantaged, and this becomes the basis of the prisoner's dilemma. Developed in 1950 by Flood and Fresher, the dilemma essentially forces perceived selfishness. This has real life use, such as in the case of the Scream Killers, where Tori Adam Kick and Brian Draper were interrogated for a crime. I won't go into the detail about the crime itself, so as to not disturb people, but just the outcome. In the end, Brian chose the selfish option and ratted out Tori, whereas Tori chose to remain silent. Through the prisoner's dilemma, Brian receives the better outcome by betraying his friend. Tori then gets left in the dust due to his refusal to blame his friend. Often by ratting out a person who chooses to remain silent, the individual will get a reward, like a reduced sentence, and in this dilemma, it's the same concept for the risk v protect scenario on Shipwheel Island. Xander, Danny, and JD all had the option to risk their vote on Shipwheel Island. If they all protected it, nothing happened, and if they all risked their vote, then they all lost their vote at the next Tribal Council. The scenario that actually happened was JD and Xander risk their vote, and Danny chooses to protect his. By playing somewhat selfishly, and even risky, both JD and Xander get an extra vote, whereas Danny ends up in the dust with nothing. We can look at this from a personal level, take JD for example. For him at the pirate wheel, he sees the protect option as giving Danny and Xander an extra vote each, a powerful advantage in the game. For Risk, he's either gaining an extra vote for himself, or preventing both Danny and Xander from getting an extra vote. Hence why the dilemma encourages selfishness. People often only look at it from their perspective and see how it affects them, rather than studying the situation holistically. It's the prisoner's dilemma. You've just met these people, but you really don't know how they're gonna respond to something that could benefit them personally. It's a high risk, high reward situation. After this dilemma, all three return to camp to tell their tribe about the twist. This is kind of the reason why I only stated this first risk versus protect situation over the next three that occur on the season. These situations, still were prisoner dilemmas, but with this knowledge bestowed upon them, they can more easily game the situation and come to an agreement before the pirate wheel and establish who is risking and who is protecting. Despite being the most popular version of the prisoner's dilemma, two more scenarios exist that are more under the radar and one is actually from across the waters. I'd just like to warn those that we'll be talking about Survivor Australia next, so skip to the next YouTube chapter if you don't want to be spoiled. Anyway, in the 2016 edition, episode 3, there was a dilemma posed to players on their tribes whether they wanted an idle clue and a small bag of beans or a massive bag of beans. While everyone gets this option, I think the most intriguing of the three comes from Tegan and Nick, who locked themselves into a prisoner's dilemma after picking the idle clue and poorly lying to their tribe about what the clue said. After Tegan and Nick spoke aloud their clue, the entire tribe go off essentially making fun of Tegan and Nick for even attempting to pass their clue off as legitimate. A king's throne <laughs> just didn't make sense. That's why I didn't even move. I was like, yeah, we should be watching Tegan. Please. To gain some trust back from their tribe, and force the other to take the fall, Nick or Tegan could have ratted each other out, saying it was the other's plan all along. 
Instead, they eventually just reveal to the tribe they were lying and thus become more suspicious. Essentially, in this scenario, they were both choosing to reveal information. Because neither tried to throw each other under the bus, they're seen as an untrustworthy duo on the show. At the first tribal they attend, Nick is voted to be eliminated, and at the next tribal, Tegan gets eliminated. Before anyone says, Nick wasn't voted out of the game, but was saved by a game twist. For all intents and purposes, Nick's tribe wanted to boot him from the game. To relate this once again to the prisoner's dilemma, if neither individual confesses, they only serve one year. However, if they both confess, they both serve three years, making it the worse option. This is essentially what Nick and Tegan do, with both paying the ultimate price. So we've covered a purposeful prisoner's dilemma created by production, one that was caused due to the player's actions, but this final one was purposefully implemented by a player in the game. They of course are the infamous Boston Rob. Within the majority alliance that had six Omatepe players, Rob devised a policy called the Buddy System. Much like the name suggests, there were three divisions, so each person had a buddy. If a person found their buddy was withholding information or looking to flip, then it was highly encouraged they passed the information on. It's also important to note a person's assigned buddy always had to be with them, making it near impossible for an individual to break Rob's command. The geniusness of this, however, is that Rob, all by himself, creates a prisoner dilemma for every member of the Alliance. He even disguises himself as one of the six prisoners, when instead, he's the police warden. So when people rat out individuals, it's actually solely benefiting him. An example happens when Natalie rats out Ashley and Ralph's agreement, wherein if Ashley got to the end, she would be voted by him to win. This rewards Natalie with a spot in the final three, and Ashley, due to this newfound information, is eliminated at the final four. Okay, he's not gonna vote for me, Ralph? Or well, you're not gonna vote for Ashley? But she ain't gonna be there now. And it's your fault. Ashley, you could have made it to the end, but you decided not to tell me anything. You have to tell me everything. This is one of, if not the most notable moves that Rob has made across his Survivor legacy and was an integral part to him winning Redemption Island. It's a bit of a shorter video this week, but that's because I'm currently having a pretty bad cold and other things in the works for this channel. Once again, thank you all for your continued support. Again, over 90% of you that watched the last video weren't subscribed so please make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I do a lot of content on the channel, talking about game theory videos like this one, to discussing ingenious moves, to even talking about how to win survivor immunity challenges. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me, thanks for watching the video, and as always, PEACE!